live on social media. Hello, everyone. Welcome for another Puppet Podcast episode. I'm so happy to receive this afternoon or this morning, if you are in LA area, it's Kevin Colson. Yay! So, um, yes, before we go into the interview, I just want to, to present what we do. So I'm Caroline, and I'm doing this Puppet Podcast to share the passion of puppetry from all over the world and to the world. And that's why we create this. And I think right now we really need to, to get in touch with passion because this world needs a lot of passionate people and passionate people near to share that their passion to the world. So if you want to see more passionate people, we offer also on our Patreon some workshop for puppeteers. If you want to learn about puppetry, we have plenty of workshop about building, about how to stream show online, about all of those aspects of the, the new reality or about the reality or about puppetry. So that's the address right there. So yeah, we have the World Puppetry Day who is coming and I want to drop this before we go into the interview. I want to invite everyone. We want to do a big happening on Zoom to have the community from all over the world all together and celebrating puppetry and this wonderful art. So I, I will, I have the promo right, right, right somewhere, but I, <laughs> I want to invite you to maybe watch on our website. So it's on the Puppet Podcast slash World Puppetry Day. It's, it's, but you can see it online and, and join us. And we will give all the found, the money which we'll gather from this event to UNIMA, to help the International Association right now, who, who try to organize an international congress. So let's put money together and help them in this big project. So... End of commercial. Now, let's go into this wonderful interview. So, ladies and gentlemen, he produced show. He have done Muppet show and touring uh, all over. So I want everyone to clap in your, <laughs> in your li living room, in your office for the wonderful Kevin Carlson. You hear the applause. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so cool, Kevin, to have you on the show. Well, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes. I want, I, I always, I could introduce you and all your work. I, I found a lot of stuff and you, you are kind of a, a piece of, of knowledge about puppetry, but I will let maybe you to introduce you and how you fall into puppetry to the community who are watching right now. Okay, well, I've been puppeteering for close to 45 years. I'm professionally about 40 years in film and television mostly. Uh, but I did start as a kid when I was 13, you know, um, watching The Muppet Show inspired me to no end, uh, realizing that, oh, there's, there's actors, <laughs> there's guys underneath there, and they're having fun and they're telling silly jokes and these characters are just so fun. And uh, I realized that, oh, I like that. And I, I kind of knew as a kid I was going to be a performer, an entertainer of some kind. Mm -hmm. And uh, falling into puppetry made it really easy because, uh, you know, the, the diversity. You can play, yeah, you know, I played a chicken McNugget on a commercial, right? <laughs> and so, you know, Robert De Niro can't say that he was a chicken McNugget. <laughs> so, I mean, and then old characters young characters we're character actors right yeah and so that's part of the charm too i just love it yes and the the complete world of puppetry if you're doing a live show or producing a live show it's it's all the theatrics it's the staging the lighting the sound equipment the the everything about it so it's it's a full encompassing theatrical event if you're producing live shows you know so yes I love it because it's, it's it's artistic and funny and strange and and it's like we're all children. Inner child kind of comes out when you do puppets. So that's so true. That's such a, a connecting art. It's connecting with the child in everyone. So it's it's really great. And and that's true that you produce. You fall into the production side also. But it was kind of 
part since since you, the beginning of your career to produce also puppetry. Right. You know, it's funny. Um, yeah, I, I was working on Pee Wee's Playhouse, right? I, I did yeah. three of the characters on that. I did uh, Flory, Conky, and and um, Clocky. Guess what time it is? It's time for a penny cartoon. <laughs> Anyways, had a great that was a great experience. Well, a highlight of my uh, career actually it really kind of got me started. But during that time. I was uh, helping a friend set up a Halloween uh, installment and, mm. you know, hot gluing little trees on a little diorama thing. And, and we were talking and he was saying, well, yeah, so you're, you're, you're a professional puppeteer. Do you have your own show? And it was just like, uh, uh, no. And he goes, why don't you have your own show? You're a puppeteer. You should have your own show. And, and that was that kind of, that, that little poke in the ribs from my friend Jim Landis, who's now, he's a prop master. He's a great guy. And uh, that little poke in the ribs caused me to really think about creating my own show. Cause I had, I had worked with, you know, uh, Sid and Marty Croft, uh, you know, I'd, I've been on television when DC Follies with them and, yeah. uh, and other various little things. So I went to a friend of mine uh, who had his own kids party. It was James Murray. And he had his own, kids party company where he would perform as Superman and go to parties and pass out <laughs> party favors and, and singing telegrams and things of that nature. And I said, I go, James, let's put together a, a puppet show that we can rent out to birthday parties and whatnot. And so we did and created, uh, it was Timmy the tooth was basically our, our main character and it was a variety show and his uh, sidekick was brush brush. And that kind of developed into, um, you know, we, we, we did a theater run where we, we had a hundred seat theater and we were selling tickets. And we, as we were breaking down the stage, we decided, you know what, let's take it to the next level. And fortunately it was at a great time. Uh, this was like the early nineties and, and uh, the big studios were looking for home video because home video was the thing back then. Everybody wanted VHS tapes to put into the slots and let their kids watch whatever was on the tape. And so uh, we were very fortunate to be able to sell that show to them, to yeah. Universal, you know, and they made some big money. That's, they made a little. <laughs> yeah, but that, that's cool to, to start from the birdie party and to bring this show to the Universal. That's such a great combination. Yeah, it's it's very challenging to sell a show. I mean, the hoops you got to jump through and then the people you you got to know and and it's show business, you know, so mm. it's like, <laughs> it's a, it's a wild ride. I mean, cause we had pitched the show to Disney and to 20th century Fox and, and Warner brothers, all the ma major players. And they all just kind of weren't quite sure. But when we went to universal, uh, they got it. They, they saw the potential of it and the merchandising and the et cetera and everything else. And so, and that, and that's like 30 years old now, almost 30 years ago. Wow, that's so interesting. Yes, so that this is kind of a wonderful introduction. So this brings me to the deep question of the Puppet Podcast. So are you ready, Kevin? I'm, yeah, deep. Let's, deep. let's get deep. <laughs> and and people who are watching right now, feel free to bring this question into like the comments so we can bring it into the screen and just ask Kevin those deep questions that you maybe have home. So... Yeah. So the first one is the why. Like, what makes the art of puppetry an art that you cherish? Ah. You know, I saw a, a black and white photo of um, during uh, World War II, I think, of mm -hmm. uh, maybe it was in France, where it's a black and white photo of kids watching a puppet show. And the look on their faces, there's one girl who's just in awe, and there's one kid that's laughing hysterically. You know, and, and it, it dawned on me that, you know, before there was TV or, or anything for children or, you know, entertainment, when a puppet show came into town and did a show, it was the thing to see. And, and I think when I saw that picture of those kids just in awe and then also kind of freaked out by it, too, because it's, you know, inanimate objects that come to life in front of you, you know, so it, it takes there's a little bit of like, whoa, how does how do I take this in? Um and that kind of like made me realize that, oh, yeah, this is a good thing. This is this is a, a another way to entertain and and reach people that 
you know, are are just mesmerized by it. So, yeah. yeah so I think uh, that I love it. I, I I love the the all of it. I, you know, it's it's amazing how how people respond to it. And there's some people that just don't like puppets either. Yeah, both <laughs> exist. Yeah, there's people that maybe had a bad experience at a puppet show or something, you know. So that's the point. Like, <laughs> if you you have a good puppet show, you you are in a ascension ascension of like love and passion for it. If you right. you get into in front of like not quite uh, technical aspect of it or not quite right. tight, you you will maybe don't like it. But right. let's let's go to your crush moment. So I always ask, when was your crush? For puppetry, you see, like this is the spark. This is what I want to do. Uh, early on, I I was demonstrating puppets at, during Christmas time at a mall um, for these little hand puppets that were, you know, twenty, thirty dollars, and um, I was hired to uh, demonstrate them. So as people would walk by, I would talk to them with the puppet, you know. <laughs> and then I had a couple of little uh, numbers that I that uh, you know. On a on a tape cassette tape that I would play and and then perform to, but I think it was when I was just it's like street performing basically. I think that's when I really realized that oh there's there's no end to what you can do you know as far as performing and delighting people you know and making them laugh or catch them off guard you know yeah. so that, that's kind of what what started and you know I was young I was young that was my first paid professional puppet job. Wow, and into action you get this like crush, and it, it's oh, so yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, I gotta do this. I gotta do this. <laughs> That's perfect. I want to ask you, uh, in your opinion, the field of study. What would be the the best field of study for someone to become a puppeteer? Yeah, well, I think it's it's like I said before, it's character acting, right? Mm -hmm. So it's really acting. And I think, uh, you know, a lot of people think, oh, voices are, you know, well, yeah, the voice is part of it, but the true acting uh, basics are, are fundamental for that. Yeah. And I also teach puppetry for film and television. I have mm. private students and I'm just learning how to do it on Zoom so that it, it's a whole nother way of, of uh, teaching. But I, I love teaching someone who who's, wants to do it, first of all, and and watching them develop and watching them stumble you know they hit the wall it's like oh, i can't do this i can't do this it's just too weird it's just weird i can't do this and then trying to work them through it and let them get out of themselves and just let them be so yeah acting uh, voice lessons um uh, singing because the puppets do a lot of singing that's true so singing lessons are are important um and i but i think it really comes down to what's in here you know what do you mm -hmm. got? What do you got in here? Do you want to express yourself through your fingertips like this? You know? uh, so yeah, I, I I recommend acting and voice lessons and just general cuckoo because you got to be a little cuckoo to do it too. <laughs> I love it. It's so cool. And we have a question from the audience. So let me just bring it. It's it's a long question, but William asks. What do you think about puppet show video performance that are meant for a young adult to adult audience? Or do you believe that all puppet shows are for children? That's, that's an interesting question. Yeah, it's deep. No, uh, they're not just for children. I mean, I worked on uh, Team America, World Police, you know, the movie yeah. with the marionettes, right? And that was not for children. That's and, true. and a lot of people didn't, you know, they took their kids to it and then walked out of the theater because it was just too abrasive. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, um, that's and, and, you know, Jim Henson had the same struggle. You know, hmm. he, his Muppets were, you know, on Ed Sullivan and, and variety shows like that where, you know, it was for adults. Um, but I think because of Sesame Street. It, it was kind of thought that, you know, they're young puppets are for young people, you know, that sort of thing. And I think some some parents and some adults don't want to admit that they like puppets, but they do, you know, <laughs> can't help it. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a that's a good question. 
I, I like the fact that puppets can entertain. I, in fact, I, I started um, uh, uh, Puppet Greetings was a, a, a e-card site. We tried to get that going and uh, we spent five years trying to make it work and it was just, you know, nobody wants to pay for it. So, <laughs> but we had a lot of fun creating, you know, birthday card greetings that you could send out. But this was during the time when it was dial up. And so all you got was the little buffering, you know, you had to wait and people say <laughs> buffering. Kind of like I'm doing right now, buffering. <laughs> yeah. So it, yeah. The process. It's so it's so interesting to to see that you 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 give it a try and you 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 base your career on both, but I think every puppeteers have to to educate adult towards their art form, like educate that it's not just this this cliche or and you, you, <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah. I want to hear you also as you are a teacher. Maybe you have your own definition of a puppet, like in your own word, how you you verbalize what is a puppet. Well, I usually tell the tell people I'm training is like it. It's not. It's not just a puppet it's a character hmm. the character goes deep you know it's 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 you know the backstory the emotional feeling the everything that goes into it um and the puppets sometimes can be limiting because you know the mouth shape might be weird and it's like your finger doesn't fit right or there's you know a stitch in the back of the neck that comes loose and stuffing comes out it's like well, those things you have to deal with and, or like um, I was performing a live puppet show and and the arm, the left arm, I was working the rod with the left arm and it came off. It came off of the shoulder. And so I just had the, the arm on the rod. And so I had the, the character chase it off. <laughs> Anyways. So Funny now, anecdote. Did that answer the question? Not really. But, you know, what is a puppet? I mean, it's really a character. It's a character, a character. you know, and it doesn't matter if it's paper mache or a marionette or a shadow or a you know what i mean it's a character so that's that's the the thing you got to drive for if you're learning puppetry and a lot of people i tell too it's like you know if you were going to learn how to play the saxophone you would pick up the saxophone maybe make some noise right but the goal is to make music so yeah. you you know there's a long time of practice and rehearsal and acclimation so I, I think that that kind of helps people understand that it's not something you can just pick up right away. You really got to work at it. Yeah, to know the rules and the mathematic of it and the technical aspect. That's so true. Right. And let me ask you if you feel that puppetry is an ascension, is getting more popular or not? Well, it kind of goes in cycles. I think it, it goes in cycles. I, for example, um, you know, in film and television, you know, the, Puppets got replaced by CGI um, a lot of times, but mm. now it's kind of coming back. I think, you know, filmmakers realize that the actual puppet, like the baby Mandalorian, uh, the baby Yoda, yeah. uh, that that's a puppet. And I think <laughs> there's a, a, a richness to that because if it was just CG, it would be like, yeah. And uh, um, I have another train of thought that just left the station. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah. It's the buffering. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, the buffering. No, I think it goes in cycles. Like I said, um, there was a show on uh, Fox. I think it was it was called Greg the Bunny, and it was in prime time, and it was a funny show. It, was, it t took place behind the scenes of a uh, of a kid's show, but the puppets were adult, right? And it was in prime time, and they I, they did one season, and I remember talking to a producer friend of mine who said, "Yeah, that's going to kill puppetry in prime time." for a while right so don't try to pitch any shows that are going to go to prime time you know so um but it comes back you know that's the thing and after this pandemic i think there's going to be a a, a a resurgence of of puppets that you know for example there's the uh, friends of mine have produced a show in uh, canada um it's called uh, the barbarian and the troll for uh -huh. the and uh, if you've seen the trailer for it, it is it looks great. It's it's like a Game of Thrones for kids, right? <laughs> and so I think that's going to be a huge like uh, 
paving the way for the rest of us to kind of get puppet stuff out there, you know? Yes. I, I think we're on an upswing. I mean, I do, I do see like on Instagram, a lot of people doing, pulling out puppets out of their closet and doing stuff. That's just, (laughs) you know, okay. You know, all right. At least least you're doing something, but yeah. Maybe work a little harder, raise the bar a little bit, maybe, you know? Yeah. They they have like this crave for communicate or creating and, and for sure we, we have to get some technicality going on also. Yeah. That's and true. we live in a time where we can do it now and we can yeah. share and self-publish our own stuff, which a lot of people are going, oh, hey, look at me. You know, I can do this. So. <laughs> That's so true. And I want to hear you on your goals, like in your career. Like, do you have something you envision for the future, like something you want to achieve or, or produce or do for, for the next couple of years? Yeah, well, I, I'm, you know... Uh, Getting up there a little bit. I got a little gray hair. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but uh, no, I I, I want to produce more. I want to produce uh-huh. puppet kind of things and non puppet things as well. I think I could, you know, I've I've done it for you know close to forty years now of working in film and television. So I know I kind of know the ins and outs of of production, and yeah. you know puppets puppet productions especially for film and television, you know. Uh, we even on the Muppet movie, the the most current ones. It, I mean, Bill Beretta was our puppet captain, uh-huh. and I just watched Bill have to explain things to like the the DP and the and the director and the producers. Like, no, this is how we do it. This is how you, you your idea of what you're trying to do. It may work, but it's going to take twice as long. Listen to what I'm saying because we've done this for so many years, you know, and. And Jim Henson always used to say, it's like, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it, you know? So there, there is a, there is a lot of, of uh, information and techniques to do that, you know, to produce puppet shows. And I think that's something I, I'm looking forward to doing more so. And I like writing, I like writing scripts and, and creating funny characters and, and doing that. And so I'm going to continue to do that. That's so cool. That's great to, to see that you want to, to, to get into other production, to make project going on and, and happening. It's a creative aspect of it. And for sure, as you have experience, you need to bring it to, to the world. That's great. I, I, wanna, I basically want to tell people what to do. <laughs> I think you, you are at the right place. You have the right knowledge to, to accomplish that. And, and that's good to hear that you, you, we need we need leaders in this field and we need people who who know how to do it to to as you said raise the bar and and brings kind of a new voice to this art form for sure right. and you know it's one of the oldest art forms <laughs> that's puppetry true. i mean it's like ancient so <laughs> and it's yeah it's going to be around because i think it's it people love it so. Yes. And, and where do you see puppetry in 10 years? That's kind of a, a, a good question also. What do you yeah. see for the, the feel? Yeah. Well, I do think that there's, uh, there is something to be said for the, the combination of CG enhancement to puppets. So, uh, for example, on Cats and Dogs, we had a beautiful cat built by Dave Barkley and performed by Bruce Lanoil, buddy of mine. And uh, they, um, the the cat was just so emotive, and it was an uh, animatronic, right? Yeah. And it was a uh, capable of delivering the funny and delivering the emotional facial stuff, and so the CG department didn't have much to do mm. to enhance it, but the little enhancements that they did made it even better. So I think there's going to be a nice hybrid of of CG enhancement with regular traditional animatronics and regular puppets. Yeah. Um, maybe in 10 years we'll, we'll have that. Who knows? Yeah. More hybrid stuff. I think we are in a hybrid kind of also performance live and real time. And you have a lot of hybrid stuff we're coming. Yeah. Yes. And I, I want to know, I didn't like in the pre-interview, we didn't talk about if you have a puppet uh, somehow around you. I, I, 
<laughs> I'm kind of surprising you. Do you have a an object you want to show us for for oh, the an object? An, yeah. An animate object? Yeah, something who can answer the question, the definition. <laughs> 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 yes. And we have Sharaf who's saying, oh, oh my God. Hey. Hi, Caroline. Hi, it's me, Timmy the Tooth. <laughs> yeah, it's an honor to have like Timmy the Tooth in person in the Puppet Podcast. Oh, it's great to be here. You look great. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you. that's so cool to, to see you in real time. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> have you ever seen a tooth with freckles? No, actually, but yeah. I I know my mother invests in my tooth, and she say it's the best investment she have done in her life. Well, you have a beautiful smile. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Timmy. Brush, brush, come, come look. Come look at her smile. <laughs> oh, no, he's outside. Yeah. Brush, brush, is my, he's my buddy. Yes, and and how you 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 are right now with with this uh, funny situation that we are in as a tooth, like in you 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 keep smiling to the world. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I keep smiling, but I'm wearing a mask most of the time, so people can't see. Huh. Yeah, you know, usually usually my eyes my eyes usually work, but I I ran out of batteries. So <laughs> they're stuck right now. Usually but, they go left, right, eyebrows, blinks. Yeah. All of my it. batteries are low. <laughs> yeah. What are you gonna do? Uh, we, we we will just observe that you are so alive ever your mechanism is, is not. Yeah, just just imagine my mechanics working. <laughs> I'm 30 years old. I'm I've been holding up for a lot and long time. Yeah, how you feel with all of this work? You you don't want to take a break. You 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 keep going or you you still in shape? Oh yeah, I'm still in shape. But my latest hobby is day drinking now. <laughs> no, it's not. Wow. Oh look, brush brush. Oh, I got to go. I got to go see brush brush. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Oh la la! It's so cool. That's so cool to to have the the, the yeah, unique. I got a fan. I got a fan photo. I I worked uh, on Imagination Movers, which I played the Warehouse Mouse. Yeah. And, and this, I I sent this gal a uh, a picture, a autographed picture of Warehouse Mouse, and so she sent me the picture of when she got it. Oh. I, mean, I tell you. That that just lifts you up so much when you know that you've reached someone and they just they enjoy what you do and they reach out to you and say, "Hey, can you s send me a picture of something?" You know, I just love it. Yes, yes, nice. and, and it's, it's nice to have fans. Yeah, so cool. Like uh, we we have Danny who say like, "Killing it, Kevin." Oh, hey. <laughs> Danny, to... thank you, Danny. <laughs> yes, Danny's a, good, Danny's a good puppeteer too. He's really good. That, that's so cool to to connect. It's so funny when I discover someone. I'm. It's like a a, a demeanor. Like you just like you discover another field, another network, and it's it's a lot of smart people in this field. It certainly is, and also I I represent the uh, the puppeteers caucus within our union with SAG AFTRA, oh. so we have um, close to two hundred puppeteers making sure that our contracts are are legit because you know they don't see our faces and so they think that they can get away with not paying us hmm. for residuals and etc you know and we say no we're principal performers we have the same status as tom cruise and tom hanks and any other tom that's an actor yeah. <laughs> so uh yeah it's an interesting um it's an interesting you know we have to we have to educate our union just as much as we have to do the industry of what we do. Yeah, a bit of politics also is a, yeah. an aspect of the job. <laughs> but but to, with the, 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 to educate the, the producer, but I, I, I feel you have a good position to do that. I, in, as you have produced and you have played to, to help the, the young puppeteers who are starting or. Right, right. And, and we have some really good, like you, you met the Swazzle brothers. Yes. I love those guys and they are, they're, you know, go-getters and uh, I just appreciate so much what they're doing. I, and I met them like years ago uh, in, in the Bay area 
And I remember thinking, oh, these guys are going to, these guys are going to do stuff, you know? So it's great. Yeah. To perceive the talent and the potential and they are real businessmen. They, they, they told it in the interview. They say like, it's, it's a business also. It's a, like a passion that you turn into a big relationship with, with this passion. That's so Absolutely. cool. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Kevin, if people want to see more of your stuff or, or want to connect with you, where they should go on social media or where they, they should find you? Yeah, I, I, I put put out a few little Instagrammy kind of things. Uh, I'm Kevin Carlson 1962 on Instagram. And then my YouTube channel is Kev Tooth on YouTube. Easy. So, yeah, I, I used to have, you know, Puppet Greetings, which was a website that, you know, we just, uh, we did a lot of things with that, but just never could, we, we, we created a, 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 instead of a stream of revenue, it was more like a trickle. So, <laughs> so we had, we had to let it go, but we still have like, I think we were just a little ahead of our time. You know, some, some of the stuff that we, we produced and put out there was fairly funny and amusing, I think. But there was a lot of them that was just mediocre. So, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's it's good right now. Maybe people will want more greeting, but at the same time, it's it's a lot of work. I understand. Yeah, yeah, I, and I'm also doing another uh, kind of thing called mind yucks, which which are like 10 to 15 second, just weird things. Like you know, was it Al Gore that created the algorithm? <laughs> I mean, just weird stuff like that. So. Yeah, I think Puppet could do weird stuff and have yeah, a funny yeah, voice. Puppets can get away with it. That's what that's what what's fun about it, you know. That's so cool, Kevin. I'm so happy to, to have you on the show. I'm kind of like a, I, I would speak with you all day on, on this. So let me bring just one last oh <laughs> We have one question from the audience and we will conclude this wonderful interview. We have Morat who asked this and it, this is another really great question. How do you balance your art with the business money part? Wow, that's a that's good, good question. Yeah, it's a dance. It's definitely a dance. Um, uh, luckily, I have a wife who kind of keeps tabs on me so I don't <laughs> overspend. But, you know, yeah, it's a balance. It really is a balance. You have to, you know, do your passion and do what you want to do, but don't, you know, don't, don't miss a meal or don't, yeah, you, you buy a prop instead of going to the grocery store. You know, you really got to, what's more important? Well, you got to, you got to eat, you know, so the balance is it's really important. I, I recently was going to purchase a, a, a prop for like $35. I mean, it's not a big deal, but then the more I thought about it, I went, no, no, you don't need that. You're, you're thinking that that's going to be the thing that's going to make it all come together, but it's not, it's, it was just, just an idea, which, uh, my wife told me no. So <laughs> no, I listened to her. That's, that's part of my balance, you know, being married 33 years, you know, it's a, it's a good balance. Yeah, to have someone who understand you and can help you to to take you by the ankle and okay, let's <laughs> come exactly. here. Reality. Exactly. exactly. That's a good question though, you know, the balance. Yes, thank you, Mirat, for this. So yeah, Kevin. So I will have to push you out of the screen right now. <laughs> and and stay in the virtual studio so we can cheer up after but this is kind of the the moment so uh here we are thank you so much and Larry, Larry, boom <laughs> yeah everyone thank you for watching and yes let's share this balance philosophy also it's so great to have kevin who have this knowledge and bring it to us and everyone i invite you again i must have put the website but for sure you have to look on our page it's on our facebook page or even we will promote that on our website on puppet podcast slash world puppetry day so you are all invited and yes let's do this wonderful happening it's next weekend not this one the other one on sunday at two or uh, east time so i will wish you a wonderful day or morning or afternoon if you are in uk and uh, yes let's stay in touch so next week we have another episode 
of the Puppet Podcast. So everyone, I will wish you to let me bring the jingle to have a great day. Stay in touch. Okay, bye.